Hey guys, Yulia here. So today I'm going to uh, do a garden tour of what used to be our woodland garden. But after we removed the Norway maple, uh, this area definitely receives a lot more sun. So a lot of plants are very happy for that reason. Um, also, everything is very tall and just grew in a lot because we had a very wet spring and a pretty warm uh, beginning of the summer. But um, this area right now is full of fever fuse, which are just absolutely beautiful, little dainty daisy-like flowers. And another plant that is looking good right now is this goat's beard or Arancus dioecious. Uh, it's a beautiful native plant. It is a little slow to start, so when you plant it, don't expect anything from it for about two to three years. But then it takes off and um, it starts to bloom with these beautiful astilbe-like flowers. Um, and the plant itself, including the foliage, looks like astilbe, but it's more like an astilbe on steroids. It's a lot bigger. Um, also, there are really, really beautiful penstemon digitalis, also native perennial here, which seeds all over the place and I don't mind it. Um, it actually sometimes reverts into the burgundy variety and it's just a beautiful uh, rosette. So if you move here into the walkway and believe it or not two days ago you couldn't even walk in here because um, this was all overgrown you were able to kind of pass through it but it was tough so what i did i just cleared a little bit more of the walkway here and you're able to see where you're going now. <laughs> but all of the green stuff that you see here is actually um, native plants, lots of native plants like native asters. I have sky blue aster here. I have heart leaf aster that bloom later in the season around October time. And it's a very um, valuable pollinator source um, later in the season. Also, there's some snake root that I left specifically for pollinators and <laughs> There's a lot of birds also. I, you probably will see a lot of cat birds um, kind of flying back and forth here. There was a nest right next door. So I think they're raising babies and kind of teaching them to fly now. I know they're so cute. Michael is helping me film today and he's just pointing to one of them. But um, the native grass that I have here, uh, kind of also seeded all over the place, is northern sea oats. And I love northern sea oats. It's a beautiful native grass, but you have to be careful with it because it is uh, assertive. So it will seed all over the place. It doesn't spread by rhizomes or anything, but it will seed. Um, it looks kind of like a bamboo in the beginning of the season, and then it will bloom with these beautiful oats um, at the end of the season. So really, really lovely plant, but be careful <laughs> when you plant it. And as we move further along, there are these beautiful hydrangeas. So these are hydrangeas macrophyllas, and I actually got these hydrangeas from one of my projects. Um, a contractor just ripped them out, and he said they haven't been blooming for years, so he just threw them in the dumpster, and I took them. Um, and I knew exactly why they weren't blooming because these are big leaf hydrangeas and they bloom on old wood. So if we have a um, very cold winter and really, really hard frost, the buds will freeze off and you will not get blooms. But the newer varieties actually get um, blooms on old and new wood so they are a lot more reliable, but you can see just how gorgeous they are. And because of our acidity, um, our pH soil level is about 5.7. We almost always get blue hydrangeas. Um, to get pink hydrangeas, we actually have to use lime. So right here, I also have a path kind of going around the tree um but you could see it's completely overgrown now but i'm going to leave it this way because i don't have the heart to cut all of these beautiful flowers 
So I'm just going to wait for them to finish blooming and then I will clear this out. But uh, right here, I just wanted to show you a fig that I planted last summer. Um, this is my first time growing figs. I am really excited, but also kind of nervous because I don't know what I'm doing. But this fig is actually in a pot. Uh, we put it in the garage for the winter to make sure it survives the winter, but it's doing just fine. It flushed out. So I'm waiting to see what happens with this fig. Also right here, there's a ton of fever fuse. Just look at this beautiful meadow. And um, this was my goal for this space is to have that meadow like feel because we live in a very urban area we live uh, 12 miles from new york city and if you look at the road there's a lot of cars there's a lot of traffic and a lot of people and i wanted to have that experience of being in the country um, and also this reminds me of my parents place so when i go to visit them uh, in order to get to their country house you have to walk about a mile from the train station through this beautiful meadow and this is exactly what it feels like to me every day when i walk through this space so right here i know you probably can barely see it but i will zoom in later there's some oak leaf hydrangeas that are starting to bloom that are absolutely beautiful and over in the back um, there's a pink shrub that is called quitsia and i posted a video I think this it was a video before this one where you can see it in full bloom it is glorious um, and this shrub is not native but it's also not invasive and it's very well behaved um, needs very little care um, and it looks beautiful now as we move closer to the vegetable garden one thing i wanted to show you that you guys specifically requested is that how are those American pillar arborvitaes are doing that I planted almost two years ago? So here they are, right here. And um, if I find a video when I was planting them, I will um, post it so you can see the difference. So I bought these arborvitae uh, from fastgrowingtrees.com at about three to four feet tall. And I'm um, about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and you can see how much this one has grown. Now, unfortunately, not all of them have grown that big because of um, cold spell. We had not the previous winter, but the winter before that. And some of them lost their leaders, which is perfectly fine. I'm actually going to keep um, some of these arborvitaes shorter because there's a beautiful view into our neighbor's there's a birdie right here. They're everywhere. <laughs> so cute. Uh, there's a beautiful view into our neighbor's backyard. So in that direction, I'm actually going to keep them shorter. But here, because we're trying to create some privacy from the neighbors, um, I'm going to let these grow. And I believe these grow to about 15 to 20 feet, feet tall. But the great thing about the American pillar arborvitae is that they are narrower than green giants. Um, so green giants is everybody's favorite. Uh, they're just this instant screen, really fast growing arborvitae. However, they can get up to 15 feet wide, uh, which this space is kind of tight here. So that was not an option. Meanwhile, American pillar get to about four to five feet wide. So these are perfect for here. Now, as we're moving into the vegetable garden, I have to tell you that this space brings me so much joy, almost like nothing else in the garden. Um, I think growing your own produce is just so magical. And comparing um, store tomatoes and cucumbers to homegrown, there's just no comparison. But um, in this vegetable garden, we have six garden beds and these are Vita garden beds. I will post all of the links to everything I'm talking about here in the description down below. But I bought them about seven or eight years ago and I love them. They aged beautifully. Actually, they <laughs> barely aged. And they're about three by three. And again, for just 
myself and Michael, this is plenty of space to grow produce uh, like the greens. We grow a lot of greens um, early in the spring. And even in the winter, I will have kale here under snow and I will come out and get some kale. And then as the summer um, rolls around, we have a lot of warm weather vegetables like the cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and things like that. But um, in this bed, I have some strawberries, have some kale that is starting to bolt, uh, but I'm actually going to collect some seeds. And over here, I have tomatoes already, and they are so beautiful. It brings me so much joy seeing the garden starting to produce. I don't know if you guys can see this. And um, I also have a whole bed of uh, lettuce here that still looks really good. Uh, then I have garlic and onions. I have more tomatoes back there and more tomatoes and zucchini and cucumbers in that bed over there and actually blueberries on the other side of the fence that are loaded with blueberries right now. Here I just wanted to show you the other fig that I planted. This is Chicago Hardy and I planted it here because this is a little bit of a microclimate so I want it to be safe so it doesn't um, freeze over the winter. So this wall provides a lot of ambient heat and the fig did fine. Uh, I'm also going to try to grow it kind of like an espalier. Um, again, have no experience growing figs. I know they need tight spaces in order to produce. So we'll see. I'm really excited about this one. So this is the view of the meadow from the vegetable garden. And it's magical. Um, every time I go into the vegetable garden, especially in the evening before dinner when I have to get some produce and I walk back with this beautiful Western light, there's nothing like it. It's just so magical. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the incredible hydrangea that I have here. So it is just starting to bloom. That chartreuse color is just so pretty, but Yes, this is our meadow garden. And because it is such a naturalistic garden, it is um, very low maintenance. Even if I have a couple of weeds in here, they're really hard to spot. And in fact, I rarely have weeds in here because there's so many plants that there's so much competition for light and space that weeds barely appear in here. The only thing I weed out is the extra native plants that I have here. And a lot of times I will just give it uh, away to uh, friends or maybe the public park that I volunteer for. But this space is just so magical. Again, lots of birdies everywhere. So sweet. And I think that's why we have so many birds because there's just so much habitat for them here. But um, anyway, thank you so much, you guys, for visiting today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.